inflation. Inflation can be a huge wealth killer. We're going to talk about why, but before we do that, we ought to set some groundwork. Like yeah. why right now, Brian, is it so significant talking about inflation? Well, we just came out of a high inflationary period. And I think that there's always, it's a little shock and awe after you live through an inflationary period. I'm old enough that I actually made it through the 70s, early 80s, and here we are this. And I'm like, whoa, it is just like I recalled. And in the frustration of, you kind of recall what things cost beforehand, mm-hmm. but now you see new prices. And then uh, uh, there's a small section of a part of your brain that's like, it's going to go back. It's going to go back. <laughs> but then because you've lived through it, you recognize, nope, there's a good chance that a lot of what we experience mm-hmm. is here to stay. Yeah. When you look at this, if, if we look at inflation, and this is data from the Federal Reserve from 2005 all the way until now, you can see that year over year, it kind of hovers around that like three to 4% range. But here over the past few years, it got as high as 9%. And even though it has settled back down now to year over year, it's only up about 3% or so. When you think about that 9% run-up that we saw, we are still paying for that. That's one of the reasons why it's such a significant killer, because prices go up, but it does not mean that they necessarily come right back down. Yeah, and we've and look, we've done so many inflation slides in the past where we say, okay, what did things cost in 19, 1980? Mm-hmm. What did they cost in 2015? What's really wild about this is we did what things cost then versus what they cost now. But we just went to 2020. Yeah, it was only a few years ago. If you think about like a gallon of gas, the prices for a gallon of gasoline in 2020, $2.17. Compare that now to $3.36 national average. That's a 55% increase in just a matter of four years. If you look at the gallons of milk, it went from $2.96 in 2020 to now $3.83, a 29% increase. And then if you look at one dozen eggs, it goes from $1.51 in 2020 to now a 99% increase in 2024 to $3 for a dozen of eggs. Just because inflation's come down, prices have not come down commiserately. Well, but this is just covering just cost of living things that, you know, for basic consumption, mm-hmm. food, gas. But it's worse than that. Yeah. It's actually some of your big expenses, like housing, like mm-hmm. vehicles, they've also been impacted by this inflation. Yeah, the stuff that we spend a lot of money on, we're having to spend a lot more money on. The first one you mentioned, Brian, was houses. When we look at home affordability, now we look, we went and pulled this yeah. from 2014 until now, and you can see that when you think about the percentage of household income that is required to pay for housing, on average in America, it usually was right around 25%. That's one of the reasons we have our 25% housing rule. And yet, as we came through COVID, as we came through uh, the pandemic, uh, the turn of the pandemic up in 2021, 2022, you can see now that the share of income required for housing is up above 40% right now. If you have 40% of your money going towards housing, It does not leave a whole lot for everything else. Well, and I think that's why it it is hard to discuss this, is because when we give our 25% guidance, people think we've lost connection with reality. And you can see in the not-too-distant past, it was actually pretty normalized to have housing at 25%. And I even feel it when I talk to people and I'm giving this guidance, it hurts to kind of share some of these guidelines that historically have been great, but right now they are seeming somewhat disconnected just because housing is running for us. So before we wallow in just all the bad news, let's talk about how can we actually do this better. Yeah, the first thing is have financial guardrails in place to ensure you're not spending more than you can afford. If we're talking about housing specifically, there are some things that we want you to think through before you buy a house. We actually have an entire hub out there you can go check out at moneyguy.com slash resources. But here are house buying rules. Before you buy a house, can you say pretty clearly, I'm going to be in this house for at least five to seven years. Do I have a down payment saved up? If it's a first time home, do I have at least three to 5% saved up? Or if I'm upgrading or changing to a second home, have I saved up 20% down? And have I done the math to figure out that even with interest rates where they are right now, is my total housing cost gonna be less than 25% of my gross income? If I can answer those questions affirmatively, then there's a good chance I'm gonna be able to get into a house that I can afford that won't derail my finances. But I, I, wanna, I wanna tell everybody who's watching this, is you're, you, you see this and you're like, man, but they just 
just showed that slide where affordability is running away mm-hmm. from me. And I think a lot of people, especially if you originally, like say you were in the market for a house in 2020, 2021, but you felt like it completely ran mm-hmm. from you because of inflation, you still have some trauma where you're thinking this thing is still running away from you. But I want to I caution you from getting stuck in the mindset thinking that housing is going to continue to go up 10, 15, 20% per year. That is highly, highly unusual. We came through that inflationary period where, yes, from 2020 to 2023, that houses did go up between 40 to mm-hmm. 60%, depending upon which market. But that does not mean that that will continue on. I think housing, I'm not saying it's going down, but I'm just saying that it's more likely going to do what inflation mm-hmm. is doing, which is more in line with 3 to 4% per year. So don't feel like you're being squeezed into making a panicked, desperate decision to the detriment of your financial future. Because I'm not saying that houses are going down, but I do think that there will be something that creates an opportunity to get you through this, But so don't get in a hurry. And it's not just housing where you need to have that guardrail in place. You want to make sure across the other big things you spend money on, like automobiles, you also have guardrails. That's why we have our 23-8 rule. When it comes time to buy a car, whether you're buying new or used, we want you to put 20% down. We don't want you to finance for any more than three years or 36 months. And we don't want the total of all of your auto payments to exceed 8% of your gross income. If you can stay within those thresholds, stay within those guardrails, there's a good chance you're going to prevent yourself from getting into an automobile that you can't afford. Two other small caveats. If you buy a luxury car, you need to be able to pay it off in one year. And you want to make sure that what you have going out in a car payment is less than what you have going out in monthly investments. If that's not the case, there's a really good chance that you're doing it wrong. I also want to encourage people to think outside the box. Especially with this housing market. Yeah, one of the big things I'm, I'm thinking that a lot of people, if you're having trouble with affordability, there's always house hacking. Mm-hmm. You know, Whether that means taking on roommates or you buy a house that allows you to rent out a portion of it, there are thinking outside of the box opportunities mm-hmm where maybe you can work your way through this unique marketplace. Now, again, we're talking about how to not let inflation be a wealth killer for you. One of the things that's true when it comes to buying large assets is that reversion to the mean is a thing. We've seen this in the automobile marketplace. Prices on new and used cars are not as high as they were a couple of years ago. They've started to come back down a touch. And while this hasn't happened in mass on housing yet, there's a chance that it could happen. So make sure that you're paying attention. If right now, making these decisions, purchasing these types of large assets don't make sense for you financially, perhaps waiting for things to mean revert isn't the worst solution, at least in this unique time that now, we're in. But, but I want to make sure we're clear, because I think when we say reversion to the mean, does that mean we think the housing is going to go, no, go prices are going to go down? Not no. necessarily, no. I, I think what it could mean, and you kind of were alluding to this, be patient. You know, maybe your opportunities go come from the fact that you're going to make more money. There's going to be some increases in wages. If you have high inflation mm-hmm. that's caused the higher housing, it also means there might be this higher inflation might and cause your wages to go up a little bit faster. Or even interest rates to come down. That interest would be rates coming reversal. down would help out with affordability. Don't feel like you have to force this. Mm-hmm. Like I said, time is not necessarily working against you like it was in 21 and 2022. I would rather this be a measure twice, cut once, instead of making a desperate decision where you're house rich, life poor, and to the detriment of your future financial self.